Viewer discretion is advised. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon hits the Big Apple. I'm here on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, about to ring the opening bell on a serious mission to turn around Black Pearl Restaurant. And when the bell rings, Gordon is in for his toughest fight yet. I'm ready. I suppose you actually don't give a f A lobster shack with three feuding owners. You get mad at these two? Yeah. One owner who has thrown in the towel. You're the weakest link in the chain. Another owner who is fed up with his partners. Oh, I get mad at them because I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him. And a third owner who can't see eye to eye with anyone. This restaurant has every chance of succeeding. You're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. Especially Gordon. You're a big, sad fake. Can Gordon get through to these three owners and turn the Black Pearl around? You all look so, so cool as if you don't give a it's disgusting. Or is this place doomed by its ineffective three-headed monster? Why don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. It's incredible. This is a New York City battle you don't want to miss. I've never met an individual that's so full of in all my life. How, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy. Yeah. You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you, too. Tonight, it's mayhem in Manhattan. You're so full of You'd make a great politician. You know that. My advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. City, restaurant capital of the world, home to thousands of restaurants vying to be the crown jewel of the city. Right, this will lose. The Black Pearl just being one. Started by two friends as a small downtown lobster shack, they moved to Midtown, added a third partner, and hoped to become the premier lobster restaurant in Manhattan. I suggested to Brian that we put an ad in the paper to find uh, an investor since we didn't want to spend any of our own money. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. I met Greg and thought that he would be a perfect match. Gentlemen, fish and chips. Well, it was David's concept. And um, I thought the concept was really very good. And I thought it would make some pretty good money. Did we get that 2,500? Because I'm about four grand short of payroll. The problem started when we started to run low on money. It became very frustrating around here. Brian and Greg and I stopped speaking. We would try to communicate by email, text messaging, and everybody got nervous and frustrated. This place is a nightmare for the lack of management. We don't have one voice. Well, I just asked Brian, and he's like, yeah, well, you guys can figure it out. Can we always Thanks. figure it out. Well, I know. Because they don't tell us what to do. I think Brian's more of a silent partner. If he had a choice, he'd probably just not have to work here at all. This table had a hair in their fries. I don't want to deal with this. You deal with it. Greg is the hardest working owner, but he doesn't make a decision. Who the put these letters on here? I couldn't tell you. Out of the three owners, I like David the least because his ego tends to get in the way of a healthy atmosphere. Don't touch the tickets, please. The main problem with the Black Pearl is these guys are really stubborn, and if Gordon Ramsay can help us all kind of mesh together, then this place can be phenomenal. New York City, one of the most difficult places ever to open a restaurant. I opened mine 14 months ago, and I've been busting my ever since. I'm dying to see how the Black Pearl are doing. Right, the Black Pearl. Here you go. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Good, and you are? Nigel. Nigel. My name's Stephen. Stephen, how are nice you? We here at the Black Pearl desperately need Gordon's help. We need him to come in and kind of whip all of the owners into shape. How's business? Could, could be, better. be better. But with three owners, and all three of them being over the business, they must be here, what, three or four times a week each, together? No, they're never here together, no. They're never here together? No. Is that one of the owners? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Excellent. Hi. What's your name? David Leonard. David, Gordon, nice to see you. You are... One of the three owners. One of the three owners. And are you hands-on or hands-off? Hands-on. Hands-on. And how many days a week are you here? I do three or four. Three or four. OK, good. I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, maybe start off with a uh, little 
bowl of chowder and then maybe have a chat after. I'll be around. When I walked in and first uh, met Gordon, I thought he seemed a bit confrontational. That was not very pleasant. But otherwise, I really had no impression of him. I'll be back with some water for you. Excellent. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I like your enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> what a weird bar. And when you look at the bizarre concoction of the interior, it does confirm that three different people, the owners, of course, decorated it. Oh, right. Wow, that was quick. Now, how many's in the kitchen? How many people? Yeah. Uh, three. Three. There you go. Well, thank you. That smells lovely. Did you need more time to look at the menu, or did you um, No, I'll order now, actually. You know that. Um, um, I'll go for a uh, mussel bangkok. All right. A mac and cheese lobster, please. And then I'll finish with a lobster roll. If you're looking for the most popular one, it'd be the Maine and the Connecticut. Do you know what? Bring me the three of them. All three? All right. Will do. Thank you so much. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> no, you are. Just making sure if you need anything, just yell. If anything's bad, I didn't do it, though, so I don't want to know. <laughs> What was your name? Michael? No. What? Your name? Ha, huh, very funny. Ha, <laughs> huh, you're a kidder. <laughs> when Chef Ramsay joked around with me, I think it added that personal spark of, oh, you know, Chef Ramsay isn't this evil devil that everybody sees him as. Well, the same top, first course. OK, then a lobster mac and cheese after mac that. Cheese. OK. And he has a chowder right now. Mmm. A little bit watery for chowder, huh? What a shame. Hello, Chef. How are you? Oh, very well indeed, thank you. Are you You're Muscles Bangkok. I'm Greg. I'm the owners. Oh, what are the no, owners? No, I'm not the chef. Trust okay. me. Oh, <laughs> you don't want to eat my food. What do we <laughs> come from? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, thank too, you. sir. So there's one more owner to come. Yes, yeah. Brian. So David, Brian, and Greg. Whew. OK, great. Lovely. All right. Confusing. <laughs> uh, thank you. Go ahead. Burn your mouth off. My god. Hot. Lobster mac and cheese. Excellent. Lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Thank you. Speak of the devil, and I'll let you enjoy Brian, that. how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Yeah. Yourself? Yeah, very well indeed, thank you. Yes. How did three of you come to run a restaurant? Originally, David and I had the place uh, down on Avenue A, and then we decided to get out of there. Fascinating. OK, I'm going to tuck into my uh, mac and cheese with lobster. OK, thank you. It gets more and more complicated. I'm thinking we send out all three lobster rolls on separate plates, dressed just like they would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So far, he doesn't like much. What do you mean? Food-wise. The mussels can't taste of mussels because of the stupid Thai curry Bangkok broth. Mac and cheese, it's chewy and rich, and the chowder, that watery. It's not how a seafood restaurant should run. This is not going to be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is the Connecticut for the hot lobster roll. OK. New York, this is the Maine lobster roll. Maine lobster no. roll. Whoops. Connecticut, Sorry. Maine, don't worry about that. And this is the New York City lobster roll. New York City. Yes. Connecticut, Maine. Gotcha. All righty. Uh, that's great. Thank you. All right, let's start off with CT. Drawn butter. <laughs> Horrible. Soaking wet bread. It's like eating a wet diaper. So sorry, Connecticut, but I am moving on. Lobster's not seasoned. Land, what a shame. All right, so what did, what did you think of the main? Pretty piss poor, to be honest. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Stephen. What's up? Well, he likes Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's his boy. Is he still here? Yeah, he's still upstairs. What's he doing? He's eating. He had uh, three lobster rolls, three different kinds. He had mac and cheese. He had um, Bangkok. David wants to know, is he paying for this? You should definitely give yeah, him a check. Yeah, give him a check. check. I can see that. That'll be fun, huh? After tasting the supposedly best food on the menu, How are you? Gordon gathers the three owners and head chef, Bill. Who oversees the food? I do. The award-winning lobster roll. Bread, soggy. Lobster bland. Do you not season it salt pepper when you bind it with mayonnaise? No. No. Why not? Well, we get most of our recipes and our ideas from Maine, and it's not the way it's done. Well, they have salt in Maine. I've, I've lived in Maine for three months. I know it very well. Chef Ramsay didn't like our lobster roll, and he said he's lived in Maine for three months. But if he'd lived in Maine for three months, he'd know that a lobster roll is exactly the way we make it. I'm really nervous now. I've never known a chef that's not allowed to season his food. Is this man your chef, or is he your puppet? No, he's my chef. David has this tone of being condescending and knowing it all. How much debt have we got over the house? Quarter mil. Yeah. Yeah. 
who has the final say? If one of us presents an idea, we vote on it, and we decide whether we want to go forward with it or not. Is it hard running a business with three partners? It's hard for us, yeah. When was the last time all three of you sat down? We have not, we have not done so. OK. I don't feel that any of you are committed to making this work. Have we fallen out? Oh, yeah, a couple of three times, yeah. So that's yeah. why we don't meet? Yeah. OK. Who fell out with who? Oh, I get mad at them. Why? Because uh, I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him, of course. Yeah. yeah. I felt that Gordon was right about many things, but I think he jumped to conclusions and that we are not committed to Black Pearl. A restaurant run by three passionate owners, no chance. Brian, he works two days a week. David, well, I don't trust him one little inch. And as for Greg, well, he's pissed off with both of them. Basically, in a nutshell, sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. Who am I? Snow White? Coming up, Gordon confirms that three is definitely a crowd. Unfortunately, the appendix out of all three of you is Brian. We don't need him. You get to go home. Really? Yeah. But two doesn't prove to be much better. We're, we have several brains in here. Where the f is sick? Why don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. And there is definitely one who stands out. Do you know what I've just discovered? Mm. You're so full of you'd make a great politician. And later, Gordon discovers the Black Pearl's little secret. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. You amaze me. The award-winning main lobster roll is Canadian. That's all coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. After a frustrating conversation with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to take a look at how the Black Pearl operates during a dinner service, especially on a night that all three owners are there. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. The chowder's good. The fancy calamari salad. It's really good, I promise. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. Where's that fisk, Phil? Call me right now, David. I got a crab cake, it's getting cold. Two lobster rolls and a fried shrimp to be for uh, the, the shrimp rolls aren't ready yet. What happened with that? I don't have a fried shrimp french fries. So when you and Brian are here together on the same day, Brian takes care of the We're problem. never here together the same day. Oh, you never here? Oh, OK. Yeah, it was weird having David in here expediting because he doesn't normally do that. And having someone on this side of the line that knows what they're doing is key. Do we have one more crab cake? No, no, I, you sold the last one. Oh, that's it. We don't have it. Oh, my god. That's cool. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hi. I believe this may be raw. <laughs> What's wrong? Undercooked. Undercooked. I mean, we're deep fat frying it. This can't be normal, but surely to. I need an order of fried shrimp. This one was undercooked. What? Are you kidding me? David's lack of experience on the pass is resulting in lack of quality control. They wanted these two well done. Zap them. Un What's that? Four cups already with them? I think it was a competition amongst the three owners to try and prove to Chef Ramsay that they knew what they were doing. And I felt Greg kind of felt out of his element because he's normally in the kitchen. I'll take this back and we'll do something about the muscles. We got sand in the muscles. There's supposed to be sand in the steamers. That's why they get a I don't know, guys. So if people don't know what they're ordering, what are they ordering? David's definitely a know-it-all. and. He can be a little rude. What table is that? Table eight. Thank you. Hi. You had the uh, clam bake, and there was a problem with the mussels or the steamers? Both. They're terribly sand. Yeah, there should be sand in the steamer. There often is, and that's why you have the broth to dip them in. So what would you like instead of those? Uh, nothing. In fact, I'll just eat the lobster. I'm fine. OK, it'll be right out. Uh, we just reprimanded. I do not think that Chef Ramsay likes David. Because Chef Ramsay has a detector, and David can be full of it sometimes. What happened? Thanks, Chef. No, they're done. They're done? Yeah, they just didn't like it. That's the funniest fish and chips I've ever seen in my life, you know that? What happened? Can I just smell inside there, mm. will you, please? Phil, two seconds. This smells smell all right to me. It's from the sink. What do you smell, Phil? It smells old. Why didn't they eat it? I don't know, Gordon. Yeah, do you ever ask yourself that question? I don't. I ask I myself suppose, that question all the time. I suppose you actually don't give a. F you know that. I do give a. F you know I give a. F you seem a very relaxed man with your restaurant. What do you want me to do? I disagree. It doesn't smell bad to me, the fish. I've right just now. given a piece to your chef. Yeah. The piece was stinking. It wasn't stinking. You're blind, my friend. No. If you're not blind, you're clueless. You know that. Now the owner said it's not stinking. It's fragrant, fresh, and. Perfect. That's why it came back, right? Massage his ego.
Concerned about the quality control of the food yeah, show me around. and the truthfulness of the owner, Gordon wants to do a little investigating. They're all from Maine. These are uh, Maine, some from Canada. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. Yeah. So the Canadian lobsters are always a lot cheaper. I use the Canadian lobsters for raviolis and tagliatelles and spaghetti, but they're not Maine lobsters. After a disappointing dinner service comes to an end, Gordon is ready to share some of his initial observations. Tough day today, and I'm, um, I'm deeply concerned. I see a ship here that is rudderless, and maybe that was the first time that all three of you were working inside this restaurant in a long time. Tonight showed. When was the last time you expedited? All the time I'm back there. You were not, you're not really back there as much as you were I'm, back there tonight. No, no, never, because it's never been that. We've never had the whole line up, the whole line with tickets, ever. David, can you stop being a slippery eel for 15 minutes in front of your team and answer the truth? Gordon, the truth is that yes. I'm back there when it's busy every night that I work. I think a lot of what Chef Ramsey's had to say about David was fairly true. I don't believe that David shows that he cares. OK, I've, uh, I've seen enough today. I've got to go and start really seriously understanding, you know, how to get a direction within this restaurant. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Good night. Uh, David. Yeah. You tell me about the passion with the main lobster. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Same water as North Atlantic waters. You're telling me now a Canadian lobster, half the price of a main lobster, is the same taste and flavor? There's a big difference. I can't get Maine lobsters. That's right, so they get yeah. them from Canada. I'm using Canadian lobsters. That's right, that's what they do. But, the but I don't advertise them as Maine. Tell me, is it a different animal? Maine mm -hmm. is a Canadian lobster for you. Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Holy I'm asking you a question. What you're trying to dictate to me is that you're selling Maine lobster. They're not from Maine. Well, it comes from the same vendor. Holy The award-winning Maine lobster roll is Canadian. He was wrong about the lobster issues. It pissed me off. I thought that was a bit unfair for him to take that stand, and especially since he was incorrect about it. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. That was fun. Incredible. It's a new day, and Gordon has organized a staff meeting. How are we? Good. A rarity here at Black Pearl, as there have not been any meetings in the last seven months. OK. A quick exercise. So, I want to find out how you feel. We're going to write anonymous questions. When you write, make sure you put the name you want the question to at the top of it. Fold it up and put it straight in the pot. OK. Greg, how come you waffle with your answers? Well, basically, I try to keep everybody happy because otherwise I wouldn't have a staff. And that's why I sometimes waffle and go back and forth. But if you had a, a little bit stricter philosophy yeah, for Yeah, I could definitely things. be stricter. Oh, yeah, I could definitely be stricter. Thanks for being honest. OK. David, why haven't we got aprons? They know where the aprons are. They just don't choose to wear them. But why can't you say it's policy to be in an apron? Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Why can't you ask my question without a question? I did answer your question. You did? That is quintessential David. He'll answer you with the question. So to communicate with him can be very frustrating. David, show the girls some respect, will you? You're great at beating around the bush, you know that? No. Yeah. Huh? In front of everybody, why can't you answer the question? I thought I did answer the question. Rather trying to be such a smart ass and answer another question. I did answer the question. Do you know what I've just discovered? Hmm. You're so full of you'd make a great politician, you know that? David has the biggest ego. He's very stubborn. And obviously, you're not doing everything correct. So get over yourself and allow somebody to help you. Incredible. I'm surprised you've got anybody working for you. Over the last half hour, you all look so, so cool as if you don't give a it's disgusting. And finally, to all three owners, why don't we have one general manager? What are they crying out for? Greg. They're crying out for direction. They need a rudder. 
make it one of the three. Why can it be just one of the three owners? Thank you. Absolutely critical. One voice, one direction. So who's committed? I believe that I'm capable of doing it, uh, but now I have to follow through and do it. I think Brian and David will get on board. I'm gonna get some fresh air. I'll see you later. As the owners were contemplating which one of them should be the hands-on manager, Chef Ramsay decided to generate some excitement for tonight's dinner service by adding a new special. Okay. Yep. Right, time for a new beginning. Okay. The secret of this dish is the lobster bernays, lobster they're going to eat first. Underneath is breadcrumbs, potatoes, and a hint of rosemary. First off, the membrane and the inside of the lobster, out. We serve this one, open and out. Okay, done. And our potatoes. Okay, get the potatoes nice and crispy. Yeah. Put our breadcrumbs in there. Two thirds of potato, one third breadcrumbs. Okay, now they're starting to colour. Okay, good. Out. And lightly fried. Okay, line the shell with that. Now, I want to see it ooze lobster. Okay, on, and then we'll go with our sauce. Absolutely delicious. And then in the salamander, okay. This is an absolute pleasure to have him in here and showing us things, and we learned a lot. Mmm, lobster. I would pay $40 for that, yes? Right, get some forks in, let's have a little taste. A little bit of pecorino, lightly over the top. It's delicious. I'm not blowing smoke in my ass, but that was <laughs> delicious. It is great. I'm it's not saying that. I don't give a <laughs> Long day today. I want to try something for tonight. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to run in the place for an hour. OK. You expedite, and then you switch. And I want to see one person step up to the mark and take control of the ship. Unfortunately, the appendix out of all three of you is Brian. We don't need him. He's a nice guy and all that, but nice guys don't run restaurants. OK? All right. Thank you. David's going to be expediting for the first hour. Then we're going to switch back. If I have the choice of Greg or David, I would definitely prefer Greg, because I think he's a really nice person and great to work with. What's up? You get to go home. Really? Yeah. OK. All right. Do you mind? I, I don't. I mean, you don't mind. That's great. Is, it, is it all right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely fine. Don't take it personally. Get up a relaxed evening. All yes. right. Excellent. I felt a little uncomfortable being pulled from my own restaurant, but I get to go home. How much longer? Open up. Open up, and you're ready, guy? OK. Hi there. Welcome to Black Pearl. All right this way, ladies. All right, you guys enjoy. Ready to rock. Thank you very much. And roll. The specials for today um, are on the front left. It's a, a one and a quarter pound lobster split in half, and then with the Bernays sauce on top of that. It's delicious, I have to say. It was really good. <laughs> Maru, next time you come back, would you bring me a diet soda in it? Mix a little bit of club soda in it, too, so it's not quite so sweet. Here, let me uh, get that out of your way. You want um, these? You want to keep no, these or take those away? Oh, OK. Yeah, don't just put the club soda at the end, because then it won't have the mixture. So, you know, mix it in. Thank you. Take care now. Good to meet you. So, I have two fish and chips, table 36. Oh, I thought I ripped your <laughs> hard out. <laughs> Why? When David's expediting orders, sometimes I'm a little nervous about going into the kitchen to ask about my tables, because he'll just bite back at you. I, fi I, I fired this one, so. Yep, yeah, but no, that's why it's over there. Right. Talk to me like I'm a real person, not like I'm an idiot. David, I just want to remind you, um, this one I wrote gluten-free. I got it. We're all set. We have several brains in here. Oh, my God. Ugh. Keep an eye. I'm going to go switch with Greg. Switch. OK. Right, we're halfway through service, and uh, Greg's on the hot plate now. I can't wait to see what happens. But personally, once a waffler, always a waffler. We'll find out. Muscles, Bangkok, thank you. I can't find it. Bangkok, Bangkok. There they are. That it is. You coming or going? How many are you? Five. Five. Under what name? Jackson. David sometimes can uh, patronize the customers a little bit. Jackson, five. I'd rather have someone that's going to be cordial about it than some <laughs> that's going to patronize everybody. Man, you guys are always annoying. Uh, Phil, this lobster roll sitting here. What's it going with? Oh, I didn't tell you it was even ready. It's waiting for a roast fillet of fish. Talk to you guys. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, it just sat there going soggy. Standards, yeah? 
Let's start to talk to me, too. I'm down here. It's a Blue Point, Malfeck, and a Malaspina, and they said they already had it. They did. They did? Then why am I doing it again? 35? I have no clue. You can use Greg, it. Greg, we've got food backed up now. Last line of defense. Which tables don't like it? Well, it was um, my table 8 and table point. 30. Did they fire it? No. OK, fire it. They're waiting. They already had their oysters. Mussels with garlic, lobster, grenades. Well, it seems to be slower on the hot plate with Greg yeah. at the helm than when it does David was there. Yes, it does. It seems to be a little bit slower with it. Greg. Damn. Greg, I feel, is trying his best. And a bisque. No? Where the hell did that go? Why don't you call it so I know what it is? What are you waiting for, Doc? Oysters. Oh, they're coming then. All right. Maybe. Where the hell did it go? I don't have a lobster bisque. It went out. Come on, get it together, man. Making another two. Getting very tired. Getting very tired. Of Just when things seemed completely out of control. I don't have a lobster bisque. Where the hell did that go? Getting very tired. Of Come on, guys. Greg settled things down in the kitchen. Put the old girl on the plate and get her out of here. All right. Thank you, sir. 86 it. And managed to get the final few plates out. That's it. Start cleaning it up. Breaking it up. Before Gordon can turn Black Pearl around, he needs to find one managing owner. So he gathers the staff to make a decision. Okay. If all of you had to choose one out of the three owners to direct and to run this place completely, who would it be? Write it down for me. OK, first person, David. Second vote, Greg. Third vote, Greg. Fourth vote, Greg. And finally, Greg. This is pretty significant. You know that, guys. How do you feel, Greg, if you were to run this place? I'd, I'd run it the way I think it should be run. Um, I would do a lot more with the staff, um, and I wouldn't have to justify myself all the time. All three of you have fragmented this business. David, isn't it best that we listen to the team for that cry of help rather than having to massage your own egos? I think Greg would be a perfect general manager. David is full of I've heard him say many times that Greg has no idea what he's doing in a restaurant, so it will be very interesting. I'd definitely like to give it a shot, for sure. Thank you all for being honest. Thank you. Well, one thing's clear, that the staff want Greg to run this place. Even David wants Greg to run it, so that's good news, but I'm not 100% certain that Greg has the to run this place properly on the back of tonight's performance. But what I can tell you is, the business does not need Brian. In the city that never sleeps, Chef Ramsay's team worked all through the night to transform the Black Pearl into a Manhattan hotspot. Right, good morning. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Everything is uniform. Oh, wow. Much better. <laughs> we haven't got three different sections with three different colors. It's not a mix and match. Oh, those are so cute. It's vibrant, classic, and inviting like it should be. Oh, this is so nice. Oh. I love the lobster. Right? It gives us a great boost. This is a, a, really, a real good shot at getting this thing up and moving the way it needs to be. David, what do you think? Column should be yellow. Everything's reorganized. It's, you know, it's another way to do it. David, please don't touch it. Does it blow me away? No. I've got something to explain over here, something quite exciting. It was donated by the Marine Ecological Habitat. Now, I promise you, you'll never find another machine anywhere like this in New York. And David, I promise you now, between you and I, this is from Maine. <laughs> And of course, if they catch it, they eat it. Yes? I think it's terrific. <laughs> oh, you got it. We're going to have all sorts of people coming in there trying to get a lobster out of that. Oh. And people will be attracted to it. You are mine. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. As the staff enjoyed the new interior, Chef Ramsay got set to reveal another change. Everyone looks great. Happy, everybody? Yes. 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 Now, 
We have to market this place. Yes. And I can't do it without the help of our special guest. Here he comes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How you doing, buddy? Manhattan's favorite lobster. Right. right. We're going to hit Times Square and get some noise on there. We're going to hand out flyers. We're going to hand out T-shirts. We're going to shout it out. OK, Louis the lobster. I'll see you in uh, Times Square in five minutes, yes? Get going, buddy, yes? And Louis, if you you're going in the tank, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Times Square with Chef Gordon Ramsay and all those people is a terrific idea. Have a great day, yeah? Thank you very much. Have a your restaurant tonight. This New York, the word spreads fast, so I think people will be rolling in tonight. Come visit us at the Black World tonight. Going to Times Square with a lobster guy and where all the tourists are and telling them to come down and eat at your restaurant, hey, we're not going to see any effect from that. I'd be really surprised. We love you we love tonight. tonight. Only hours before the doors open for relaunch, Chef Ramsay wants to get everyone up to speed on the new menu. OK, start off from the top. Uh, we'll go through each and every dish, and then we'll have a little taste after it, OK? OK, good. Right, two chowders, yes? Uh, Manhattan clam chowder and New England clam chowder, yeah? The lobster roll, black pearl uh, special. And it's going to be toasted on the inside as well, OK? So it doesn't go soggy. And then we go to the Boston cream pie and uh, a waffle sundae. It's fresh, it's vibrant. Standards are going to be set tonight, and the kitchen's going to be properly run. OK, good. I'm going to get changed. Get some knife and forks, start tasting. Ceviche, majorly trendy. You taste the ceviche? It's so good. Oh Not very good. I don't like it. Mm, really? Those scallops were so good. Oh my god, this looks like heaven. I don't like that shrimp thing either. That's amazing. Ah, and that's good too. What kind of fish is it? It's codfish? I don't really like that. Coming up. So we had a great call slot. David continues his tirade against Gordon. That's ridiculous. And note to Greg. You're now running this place. Our puppet dictator. <laughs> Greg tries to handle the restaurant on his own. She wants a salad. Yeah. Give her a salad. Just tell me that. Ah. Oh, my God. Do Brian and David help out? Service sucks here. Got a gun? And has Gordon... This is real for me. ...finally been pushed too far? You're not passionate. Gordon, you're ungrateful. So what? You're soulless. You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you too. You're not going to believe what happens. You're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. That's all coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. With relaunch night upon them, Gordon gathers the owners to implement his biggest change. When you think back to the beginning of the week, it's been a bit sort of tempestuous. But we did come to a consensus on who should be running this restaurant. This is a document basically outlining that all three of you are happy for Greg to be running the Black Pearl. Could you just read it out for me? We, the partners, David Leonard, Greg Ryan, and Brian Woods, uh -huh. agree to name Greg Ryan as the managing partner of the Black Pearl, at which time decisions involving bigger issues arise, Greg must call a meeting to present the proposed changes to all of the owners. A majority rule will determine whether or not the proposed changes should be made. That's it. Excellent. Who would like to sign first? My name's first. I'll sign first. I don't know if I have more faith in Greg. So if Greg succeeds, that'll be great. Wonderful. There you go. So you're now running this place. I am. Yeah, good. David, Brian, tonight you're coming as guests. All right. 6.30, table's booked. I'll see you later. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now get the <laughs> out of there. I definitely feel that I'm in control now uh, and that I'm going to run the business the way I think the business needs to be run. All right, guys, we're going to have a big night tonight. We have a beautiful new restaurant. We have wonderful new menu, and we're going to have a lot of people in tonight, and that's the best thing that can happen here anyway. <laughs> so please, everybody, have a great time. Do a good job, and we're going to be great, OK? Yep. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Party of five? Party of five. Party of five. Party of five. Party of five. Make sure the waiters get the customers up to have a little go at pulling the lobsters out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a yes. Yes. yes, I will right now. And then we'll yes. let you have it. Yes. Make sure, make sure we get the customers up to play uh, lobsterama. We are encouraging customers to try for a lobster. Because if you catch one, we seal it for you, and it's free. Oh! Here we go. First course, New England clam chowder, field greens, and tuna ceviche. It's going to be a big night tonight, and this is Greg's chance now to step up to the mark and prove to him 
and his two partners that he's capable of running this business. We've got to flip tables, we're going to be in a lot of pressure, and more importantly, the kitchen has a menu streamlined they can push out quickly. Only time will tell. Grilled swordfish and a, uh... And a burger. And a burger, thank medium you. Medium and medium rare and swordfish. What do I take? Where'd it go? Gordon, I introduce you to my closest friends in the world. Nice. Are you as stubborn as this one? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Gordon, I'm a guest. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, yes. Uh, welcome. Thank Come you. in. Come out of the cold, please. We got a hostess over here, please. As customers roll in, the kitchen is about to be slammed with orders, and Greg and his kitchen staff are about to face their first big test. A chicken a slider at Bernays and a two fries. Also, another fish soup, another burger medium. You're killing me, chef. You're killing me. The lanterns, those things are terrible. Let's fish up with candles. Three chickens, four sword. Thank you. Table one. Table one. Sub salad. Where? Where they got the what combo. table? Table one. So what do they want? Instead of fries, she wanted salad. Have it. I first saw the tank part, and I said, we got a lobster tank? The only one in New York. What does that tell you? What can we do? Anything? Got a gun? What's the matter? On table 27, yes. I put in the pearls and appetizer, and yes. I did not fire their entrees yet, and they're getting their entrees. Ah, come on, hold on. Yeah, hold on, B3, come on. this is all B3. B3, right here. Yeah, right that's what I'm trying to do. Service sucks here. Kitchen must be very oh. Grilled swordfish, two soups, two seafood casserole. I can't cook for two people who call in order. I don't give a Just make it. You son of a bitch. I'll take this back and I'll see what we can do about that, alright? 34 said he got a New England clam chowder. Give me a break. I need a Manhattan clam. I mean a New England clam chowder now. Tonight has been like a again. The kitchen got backed up. It took forever for all of our food to come out. Come on, Greg. We've got to run it. We're falling behind in there. Come on. It's ridiculous. That lobster salad has been sat down there for 20 minutes. Yes, What's going on? Yes, it's supposed to go out with this table right come on. here. The uh, coleslaw, very different from ours. We had a great coleslaw. We had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. Greg, you told me 33 for the fish and chips. I did not tell you 33. I didn't tell you anything. Oh, my God. You got a pen. I got to rent this down. Note to Greg, <laughs> our puppet dictator. <laughs> So she wants a salad. Yeah. Give her a salad. That's all. Just tell me that. Ah. I ordered a medium rare. Yeah. Thank you. Where do you go? What do you need? Medium rare. Uh, what does she want? This medium? Where the sick? Why guys? don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, a sirloin burger, two lobster rolls. How many times can I call it? I need table one. I need, I need table nine. I got getting cold. It's been a chaotic evening. Right there, right there. It's going out the door right now. And the kitchen has been on the brink of disaster. Come on, you guys. You got to set your kitchen, too. We can't do it all for you, right? But Greg has not given up. Get him organized. And neither has his staff. I need three of these right off the bat. Just stack them up there. I'm going to 36. I'll be back. Excuse me? This is the blueberry crumble, people. Okay. What's the feedback from the table? Everyone really likes the food, even though it's taken a while to get there. Without having David O'Brien around, it was actually all right. It was pretty good. The staff worked very well together, and so that made me feel good all night long. The lobster was really good. Nice and buttery. You might have to do another waffle thing. Yeah, I have about four more waffles. All right. We've got one ticket left. Greg's doing really good. He's making decisions like right and left, and that's a big change. High five, you guys. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen two, three months from now after Chef Ramsay has left. After a tough relaunch dinner, Gordon gathers David, Brian, and Greg to give his final words of advice. Tonight, you stood on that hot plate and you busted your ass off all night long. Mate, you've got a big heart. Me, have you got passion? Thank you. But whilst you've got the hunger and the passion, I don't think your two partners actually give a damn. You are an honest individual. You're here two days a week, but you don't put the effort in. You amaze me. What? Because all week long, face to face, you pretend to care. Oh, Gordon, come on. You don't give two about this place. Really? You're not passionate about running a restaurant. Really? You're just abusing it and using it. What, 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 what did I do? I've never met an individual that's so full of in all my life. How have I been lying to you, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy? Yeah, how? 
You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you too. But tell me how. Tell, tell me. Tell me how I'm not disrespecting. I'm telling, you. Disrespect you. I'm telling you the truth. No, you disrespect me because you don't know the truth. You're just massaging your ego. Gordon, what do you mean? Not true. From the first minute you walked in this door, standing there with your big long coat and your sunglasses, looking like proud. That was it. First impressions. Then you start debating lobsters because you think you're some smart ass on the back of a few dive books. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Homartus americanus, same animal, right? Humanus americanus, my arsos. Hmm. With 21 restaurants under my belt, I work my ass off. So what? So what? And I never take anything for granted. Fascinating, Gordon. You treat the staff like You never, amaze me. Never did that. Excuse me? Never. Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Never. You can't even be honest with yourself, let alone me. Mate, you've been exposed. Oh, yeah, exposed. You're a hypocrite. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. For you, it's about a TV show. This man is about a restaurant. The TV, David. And I mean it. This is real for me. And for you, it's an image. I disagree with you on almost everything you said. You do? Yeah, I do. Why do you disagree? Because you're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. You're a sad <laughs> My advice is for him to get his partners, get your money out, yeah, and disappear. Yeah, all right, well, my advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. You don't get it, do you? You, Gordon, of course I get it. This question has every chance of succeeding, but not why you are in it. Because you're not passionate. You're soulless. Say what you like, let me get out of here. You're ungrateful. And do you know what really hurts? The amount of effort that's gone into it. Despite what a you've been to me, I'm still grateful that you were here. I love what you've done. I think that the menu is brilliant. You like it? I don't like it. I don't really like the, I don't like that shrimp thing either. It's what, what happens when I've gone. We had a great coleslaw. Come we on, had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. The minute I'm out of that door, you'll slip back into I'll the tell old you what. I'll tell lazy you what. ways. Why don't you come back in and, you know, I'm sure you will, and see how it goes. Yeah. Time will tell. I guess it will. Thanks again, Gordon. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. That's tough. I mean, really tough. And personally, I've got mixed feelings about this week because I so want this to succeed for Greg because he's got the determination, the guts to make it work. But on the other hand, David, well, I think he's just opened a restaurant because he wants to make a quick buck. And that is not the reason to open a restaurant. That man has no passion. Tough. Next time on Kitchen Nightmares. God bless Middle America. Gordon heads to America's heartland. The problem here is the food sucks. It just makes me want to cry. To save this greasy spoon. Don't give up on us yet. And he'll need all the help he can get. Good and gracious God, we ask you bless this food. Amen. To resurrect Jane Willings. What is that? Oh my God. It's an insult to fast food. Next time on Kitchen Nightmares.